Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're at Caro, Nebraska. We're at Ford Farms. We're here with Dr. Kip Lucas Savage. We're going to have a great show. We're going to talk about setting up for processing. We're going to talk about your facilities, talk about your equipment. We're going to talk about different things that you're going to do. Stay tuned. We're coming to you from Nebraska. At Merck Animal Health, we wake up each day seeking new innovations to keep your herd healthy. This is why we're proud to now include Allflex Livestock Intelligence in our portfolio of solutions. With Allflex, we can provide the tools to identify, monitor, and trace each animal within a herd. Its state-of-the-art offerings deliver real-time insights to help you optimize productivity. Merck Animal Health and Allflex Livestock Intelligence for our animals, our industry, and our future. The Alert is on Farm Pregnancy Test for us has been unbelievable time saver because we can do it whenever we want. My favorite part about Alert Us on Farm, we can get results fast. You know, in 20 minutes, you know whether that cow goes to pasture A, B, or C. It's just very efficient. It's going to make you a lot of money. You're not going to have open cows standing there all winter looking at you, and you can do it on your time. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Kip Lucas Savage. Dr. Lucas Savage is the owner and operator of Sand Hills Consulting. Oh, yes. And you're also an owner and operator of PAC Production Animal Consultation. That's and, correct. And uh, you know, you see cattle all across the United States. Yes. Uh, you're based out of Grand Island, Nebraska. Yes. And uh, you know, to get you to sit tight in one spot is not an easy thing for me to do, but I did it's it. It's getting easier. It's <laughs> Don't believe that for a second. So let's talk a little bit about processing and just your general okay. uh, thoughts about setup. We're here at Ford Farms, uh, Byron and Ann Ford. Uh, great producers, unbelievable facility. Yes. If you're ever in the area, stop by. Um, and uh, and take a tour of this. This is this is one of a kind, and we're truly blessed to be here. But talk a little bit about what you do, just to kind of start your day. And so, yeah, so I think uh, one thing to, to just give kind of an intro to Ford Farms and, and to understand when we see these facilities here today, is to say that only large operators can have facilities like this. You know, 30,000 30, head yards. I think you're wrong. This is, uh, on average, we have about 2,400 head at this facility. Uh, Byron and his son, John, and, and Byron's wife, Ann, uh, have done just a fantastic job of learning how to be uh, good operators, uh, good business people, good marketers of the facility to understand how we get it to this type of, these type of technologies and this type of operation today. And so what Byron has taught me as a, as a veterinarian and we've worked together as a team is to, to bring this here, build it, design it, um, and then learn how to use it. And so when we come and to process cattle on our, our processing day, yep. one of the first things we do is, is we have organization and structure. And so just bringing, making sure that we have what cattle are we processing, uh, why, uh, what are we processing them for, we have good reason of why we're doing things. And then two uh, is once we have that 
built into our computer system or into just even into a, a written spreadsheet system, whatever you're using, depending on how small you are or how large you are, but it's basically is to have that structure built right up front. Two is, is then make sure that your team knows exactly what we're doing as far as for processing wise, um, what products we're gonna be using, um, making sure that the facility is organized and our, that our layout of the tables and everything is in, in the right spot. Uh, we don't wanna bring cattle up here without knowing what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it prior to doing it. So, so when you, you so I think you like, make a great point on knowing what cattle we're going to do what they're having your your protocols out in front so that then you can then you can move from there to adjusting facilities to which animals are going to come in which order yeah um, and and get along with your days that yeah and, and i had this brought up to me today sometimes we talk about going through the facility prior to bringing the cattle but I had this brought up to me today at a facility that I was at at a, a, a U.S. Meat Animal Research Center where uh, we do uh, structure and team building and, and animal handling guidance and all those things there as well. But one of the things they said is, is that actually the facility inspection should occur at the end of the day when you're done. Yeah. Main reason is so, so that if there needs to be fixes, we get them fixed prior to bringing the cattle through because there is nothing more uh, uh, stressful in a person's life or in a manager's life is to find out, hey, we got cattle to process today, but we have a break in the alley yeah. or we had this going on. You can catch all that the night before as you're doing clean down. That's the time to do your inspection is during perfect. the clean down. That's perfect. We're going to take a break. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. When we come back, more from Karen, Nebraska at Ford Farms with Dr. Kip Lucas Savage. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part, from the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver. You rely on them to get their job done right, and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle Vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. We see you, working hard from the early mornings to the late nights and every hour in between. We see you. We see the pursuit, the desire, the effort, the hope, the goal of being a champion. And we see that you need a partner to keep your animals healthy and happy. With our countless products and quick and reliable shipping together, we can do just that. To the cowboys and cowgirls, to the dreamers, we see you. If you're looking for innovative livestock handling products that focus on efficiency and safety, Daniels Manufacturing Company is who you want to choose. With low stress cattle handling being of the utmost importance, this family owned business is focused on quality, not quantity. The company prides themselves on prioritizing the animal's well-being by staying on the cutting edge of design and only using the best materials and manufacturing operations. For more information on getting the product that will work best for you, contact Daniels Manufacturing Company today. Nasalgen 3 is a new three-way intranasal BRD vaccine that offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, BRSV, and PI3. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose new Nasalgen 3 PMH, the first and only five-way intranasal vaccine on the market. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. ValleyVet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. We're here at Karen, Nebraska at Ford Farms. I'm here with my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Kip Lucas Savage. Dr. Kip is with Production Animal Consultation and consults feed yards all across the U.S., does cattle handling demonstrations and, and facility design work 
internationally. If you are putting in a new facility, um, whether you're a meat packer, you're a feedlot, you're a veterinarian, this is the guy to get a hold of to for your needs, and 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 I mean that sincerely. Um, let's what kind of walk me through the segments, and then what we'll do is we'll stop and we'll okay. reset so that we can see you doing the actual inspections. Okay. So I think uh, when when we come through and do a facility inspection wise, which should either happen first thing prior to working cattle or uh, at the end of the day, after you've done clean down, just make sure you go through these inspections and, and look to make sure we got everything correct. So first thing is, is if we have any oil leaks in our hydraulics, we're running a hydraulic chute is to make sure that these valves at times or these levers, these, these little pins right here, cotter keys and so forth, making sure that everything is in place. I go to some yards and they're sitting there trying to tinker with, you know, maybe the cotter key and stuff is off. Make sure that that's all in place because it just makes sure that make sure these levers, everything is working correctly and so forth as we're doing things. Uh, and we don't want to have oil dripping. If we do have that, you got to make sure that we have some floor dry or something like that because that does create a safety hazard in terms of slipping, sliding, so forth like that. But the most important thing is if it's dripping and it's leaking, it may not be working right. So just get it fixed. I think that's always the important thing. So just make sure there's no leaks, no drips, all those things are in place. The other thing is, is to simple maintenance on a chute. We have grease zerks in different areas, making sure that uh, routinely we do do maintenance on a chute. It's not something that has to be done, but if you're washing down every day or after every use, water gets into these things. So running grease in at least maybe once a week or every now and then it's probably every two weeks on some of these things that are low uh, uh, use uh, maintenance. So like our swing doors, for example, on chutes, um, you know, we're not going to open these up very often, but you still want to have them greased so that they do move when you need them to move. Making sure that these hinges are oiled um, so that you take kind of the squeak out um, every now and then just so they open up easy enough. Um, that's the other thing, Dr. Dan, is, is that sometimes when we're going through these things, you'll find that some of these gates or these uh, doors don't always work right at shoots or on shoots at feedlots. Main reason is because if they're not being used or uh, adjusted and so forth, but I would always still say wash them, make sure they move and that they're easy to clean. Um, as I go through on the facility, I make sure that there's nothing loose, that the floor and everything is correct. Uh, there's no loose bars, no frayed metal or any of those types of things on the chute. And in here, what I'd say is the outside, but then also just making sure no frayed uh, metal on the inside, rust, anything like that where there's holes, things where cattle can, can cut themselves. So on the alley, again, just uh, simple maintenance. Uh, one, keeping things clean. You can see here, we got the Daniels Alley. It's super adjustable and, and adjust to the type of cow that we have. However, things do rust over time um, uh, or things break. So making sure like hinge points, make sure there's no cracks. There's these like where these gussets and stuff are or for, for where things are suspended. Sometimes we do see that the welds break on these over time and over use. So just making sure that there's no cracks in anything and that everything is working right. Make sure that like on our no backs, our rubbers are there as far as our rubber stops and our bumps. Um, just making sure there that things are working right and they're quiet. The other thing is on the inside of the alley, just making sure there's no frayed uh, metal where cattle can lift a foot, cut themselves, create lacerations or injuries. Cattle are not born with injuries. They do not usually arrive with injuries. We create injuries. So making sure that there's no frayed metal of any sort where cattle can injure themselves. And that's on this alley, but even on like our, our, our V floored alleys where things happen at the bottom, making sure that there's nothing at the bottom that's frayed, I think is just really important. Now that we're set up, we're gonna set up some of the equipment. We're gonna set up some of our products. We're here with Dr. Kip Lucas-Savage at Ford Farms in Cara, Nebraska. The Alert is on farm pregnancy test for us has been unbelievable time saver because we can do it whenever we want. My favorite part about Alertus on farm, we can get results fast. You know, in 20 minutes, you know whether that cow goes to pasture A, B, or C. It's just very efficient. It's gonna make you a lot of money. You're not gonna have open cows standing there all winter looking at you, and you can do it on your time. They're here. 
They're hungry, and they can't be stopped with ivermectin. Choose Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With Safeguard's efficacy, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle, so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism, then bite back at safeguardworks.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Kip Lucas Savage. We're in Cara, Nebraska, where Dr. Kip is a feedlot consultant for feed yards. He's with Production Animal Consultation, otherwise known as PAC. You can find us at packdvms.com. Uh, you know, when you think of Dr. Kip, he is one of those that is tireless working with producers. He is so knowledgeable on cattle, cattle medicine, cattle handling, and now we're going to talk about cattle processing. So, to help me kind of understand how we're setting up your your tray here and okay. your table. So, I think the other thing that we, we like to, to talk about with our crews is just making sure that our tables are those things are very organized uh, to start our day so that everything has a, a place. Uh, at some of our yards, or a lot of our yards today, we actually do serialized tags and so forth, and so uh, we do recommend that we change, change uh, needles every 10 head. Uh, we're using Revlor implants here today from, from Merck Animal Health and, uh, and some Vista vaccine. Um, but the one thing I always tell them is always change your needle every 10 head. The easy way to keep track of that is, is, is there's 10 doses of implants uh, in the implant uh, cartridge and we usually line our tags out serial numbers uh, going in serialized order um, and then we have them in stacks of 10. Put 10 so out. So that way somebody, yeah. and then we usually will put a needle right by each stack and so that that way um, as they're going they, they get the new stack they know change needle on the syringe and start over. Um, so I think that's always an important part of it. We also have our chlorhexidine solution, which we dilute from uh, basically it's two tablespoons per gallon of use. Uh, and then we put that in our implant tray. We also uh, highly recommend like with ears wise, uh, if we have soiled ears, say manure on the ear, or if, it, if it's raining, uh, we will typically brush each ear uh, with some chlorhexidine. We have a dirty bucket which we clean you know, one time or twice, get the soil off, and then we come with a clean brush, re-swipe it so it's clean, and then we can go ahead and implant and tag um, as we do those things. And so we get that ready. And then we always recommend, as far as mixing of our vaccine, uh, the reason I, I love VistaWise is, is because it always comes with the transfer needle. Yeah. What I really like about that is, is in terms of uh, uh, just from a cleanliness standpoint, each box comes with its own transfer. So you can take those out and then as we mix this up, we always go through training on this, go through your sterile dil dil diluent first, right there. Um, you're going to, oops. Squeeze that in there like that. And then you're gonna suck it back in, stir that around. And I don't shake this then we just roll it. Um, we don't want to knock the viral antigens unconscious by shaking them up, okay? <laughs> and so uh, we want to keep them live. It's a modified live vaccine. And so uh, we do want to make sure that we maintain that. We, we just we didn't squeeze the bottle and we suck that back in. And we can milk that back into the bottle. Pull that out a little bit and we can get it all. There we go. And once we have it all in there, now we're ready for our vaccine. Right. We only mix up one bottle at a time um, we, and we keep all of our other stuff in the cooler the entire time. Okay, yeah, so this is the only bottle that's exposed. We don't want that to get hot and we don't want it to be in the light. Correct. And we don't reuse this uh, transfer needle. This transfer needle is done because the next box will have a new transfer needle. Perfect. Okay. That way it, you don't have to worry about dirt, manure, contamination of your vaccine. It's always clean. So that's the reason I love that, that product. Excellent. Okay. Well, let's take a break. When we come back from Doc Talk, more with Dr. Kip Lucas Savage. We're going to finish our setup here and we're going to get ready to process. Thanks for watching.
Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part. From the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver, you rely on them to get their job done right, and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Mita's cattle vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymetabiologicals.com to learn more. Dr. Nels here, folks. We're super excited about this book on hiring. Have you made a bad hire? Have you hired someone you wish you wouldn't have? Are you looking to hire? It's a great short read on helping you in the hiring process. You can find it on Amazon, Kindle, Audible, or find it at drnels.com. Check it out there. We'd love to see you there. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Kip Luke Savage. We're here at Ford Farms, Carroll, Nebraska. Uh, run and owned by Byron and Ann Ford, uh, their boys. John and Will, Will yep. um, just do a tremendous job. And they let us come in here. Dr. Kipp's a consultant here. He consults many yards. Again, if you have a facility needs or you have cattle handling needs or you need a consulting vet, this guy's top of the line. Let's, uh, so, we're gonna clean syringes. Clean syringes. So that well, means I get out of the way and let him do some work. So go ahead, Dr. All Kipp. right. So at the end of the day, we always like to clean our syringes, but we don't use any if this is a modified live uh, vaccine syringe, we do not use any disinfectants in that syringe at all. We use water on the outside, clean out the outside first, and then we go ahead and we disassemble the, the syringe, kind of rinse out the inside of the barrel uh, really well. You can use either brushes or paper towels or whatever you need to do to clean out that inside pretty well. And then at the end, um, I got some already here, but we fill up uh, a glass either a Tupperware bowl or a cup where we actually um, we actually uh, boil this in a microwave. Uh, we put it in the microwave for three to five minutes, usually five minutes, um, and get that really steamy hot. And then we flush our syringe out. We reassemble our syringe and we flush it out at least three times uh, in that boiling hot water. So uh, to start with, typically we disassemble, take the needle off, put that in our sharps container, uh, we come here to the sink, uh, clean off all the organic matter and everything that's on that syringe, clean off the tip of that syringe really well, and just make sure that everything is back to being clean and, uh, and right. Pull back your plunge. And if you have automatic refill syringes, it's the very same thing. Um, recommend the same exact approach on it. And so here, just make sure, put that plunge back out clean this part of the syringe. Sometimes I'll take those O-rings out, just make sure and clean in and around that O-ring as well, and then re-lubricate up that O-ring once it's uh, before I reassemble it. Just set that aside. Go ahead and wash the inside of your barrel out, rinse it out. Again, you can take some paper towels, run down in there and so forth to get that cleaned out really well. Take that apart uh, or put it back together. Make sure that you don't kink your, your O-ring. I do this right, there we go. Bring that back together like so. Screw that on. Then come to your hot water. Fill that up with the hot water. Flush it out. And again, you'll do that three times. Usually in one cup uh, of water boiled in the microwave will usually suffice to flush this barrel three times. Okay. I usually pull back the plunge on it, relock it, and the best place to store these is either in the cooler or in the freezer. Uh, dry them off on the outside, store them uh, in the freezer or uh, like I said, the cooler. The main reason is, is uh, things are slow to grow in a very cooled environment and when it's frozen, nothing can grow. So it's really awesome that way and you can keep everything clean. Well, there you have it. 
Thanks for coming out today to Ford Farms. This is Byron Ford. Byron, thanks for having us. You're welcome. Appreciate you, Dr. Kibb, for the time that you spent with us. Um, again, you get in the Caro, Nebraska area. These guys live around here. Um, just an unbelievable facility. Um, and, and always the research you do, the, the work that you're doing, we just appreciate it. Thank you. So, thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to see what we do, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Always work with your local veterinarian, and I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, here with Dr. Kip Lucas Savage and Byron Ford. We're in Cara, Nebraska, and we'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals.